Welcome to Carmine Caruso video lesson number one. My name is Ralph Devella, a lifetime Carmine Caruso student. Let me explain. My first trumpet teacher's name was Jerry Longo. He studied with Carmine Caruso. I studied with Jerry for approximately five years, at which time he called Carmine Caruso and asked him if he would take me on as a student. That was around the age of 14. Um, I then studied with Carmine throughout high school and beyond until he sent me on a road with a big band. So studying with Jerry Longo for five years, Carmine student, and Carmine for the next five years or so, I consider myself a lifetime Carmine Caruso student. I always wanted to share the lessons Carmine Caruso taught to me. Now that I am retired, I feel this is the time to pass on the information I accumulated through those years with Carmine Caruso. Being this is the first video in the series, I would like to give you a little background on Carmine Caruso and what the atmosphere was like to take a lesson with him. Carmine was born in 1904 passed in 1987. He lived in New York City his whole life where as a child he played piano and he played violin. Carmine had perfect pitch which helped him become a good violin player. Perfect pitch is rare. A lot of people say they have it or think they have it. Most people do not. Some people do have relative pitch. Carmine had perfect pitch. Carmine started teaching in the 1940s and never stopped teaching. Carmine taught at a building in New York City at 165 West 46th Street on the 5th floor. Let me tell you about the atmosphere. When approaching the building, you would hear the sound of a trumpet coming out of the 5th floor window. The window was always open a little bit, so you would always hear somebody taking a lesson. That was the flavor of the neighborhood back then. No one seemed to mind. Matter of fact, I, I think most people liked it. I never heard anybody complain. Upon entering the building, you would take the elevator to the fifth floor. You would enter into his one-room studio, and usually you would have to listen to the person ahead of you taking his lesson, so you would wait for them to finish. Uh, there was no time limit, so you would wait sometimes 15 minutes or a half hour or even longer but it was great watching them teach and you were learning just by watching that. I remember on Saturdays he would let you sit there and listen to players come in from all over and he would teach them and you would get a big thrill out of that and you would learn a lot. Some of the players that came in were very famous. Uh, I remember one uh, back then Trump player that was well known was Herb Albert he would come in, Jimmy Maxwell would come in. Jimmy Maxwell was the only trumpet player that was the first chair trumpet player for the ABC Orchestra, the NBC Orchestra, and the CBS Orchestra, of course, at different times. He would come in and stop in and you know, see how Carmine was doing and take a lesson. Also, uh, back then, there was a uh, thing called the International Trumpet Guild. People would come in from all over the world. Uh, it was the Brass Trumpet Guild. They would come in and uh, for that event. The players would play from all over. Uh, they would have instruments for you to try. So when these players flew in from all over the country, they would schedule lessons with Carmine Caruso. And sometimes I would sit there and I would listen to that also. Also remember people coming in who had trouble playing all of a sudden. Accomplished professional tr players who had trouble playing. And they would ask Carmen Caruso if there was anything that they could do for him. So usually he would sit them down, talk for a good hour. At the end of that hour, give them a simple exercise, explain to them how they should go about playing that exercise. A week or two later, they would be playing again as if uh, they never had a problem at all. I guess that was the magic of Carmen Caruso. Well, without further ado, let me present to you the first lesson, the Carmine Caruso Six Notes. This is the Carmine Caruso Six Notes. G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, and C. 
below that is he talks about timing and how to subdivide the timing in your head. So I'm going to explain to you about the six notes and talk about the subdivision of the timing. But this might be a good time for you to push pause on the video and write these notes down if you like to have them written down on paper. The six notes. Let's go over the rules of the six notes. The rules of the six notes are as important as the six notes themselves. First we'll talk about the subdivision. So a quarter note, which we usually count one, two, three, four. First thing we're going to divide that into two in our head. So instead of just thinking that one, two, three, four, we're going to be thinking one and two and three and four and. After we get that down and you're comfortable with that, we're going to subdivide it into four. In our head, we'll be counting one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So instead of one, two, three, four, is one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a rest, two, three, four E and a one. Okay, so that's enough about the subdivision for now. When I play the six notes, I will demonstrate uh, by tapping. So, the rules of the six notes now, the rest of the rules are breath attack, tongue, breath attack. First note is a breath attack, not a tongue. Second note is a light tongue. Third night note is a breath attack with a constant blow. Once we set the mouthpiece, we do not move it. It stays in the same place throughout the whole exercise, which we do play twice. When you need to breathe, you're going to breathe in through your nose, not the corner of your mouth. You're going to breathe in through your nose. This is very important because this keeps everything in the same place. We learn to play the notes without moving the, without moving the trumpet. So <clears throat> the goal of this exercise, besides it being a good warm-up and a strength builder, is that it lays the foundation for you to play the, over the entire range of the trumpet with a minimal amount of movement in your embouchure and a minimal amount of movement in the trumpet. Let's play the six notes. Remember, once we set the mouthpiece, we do not move it. We breathe in through our nose. We subdivide in our head before we move into the next note. And we play this exercise medium soft.
That's the six notes. Make them part of your everyday Six daily notes routine. is an exercise you will want to play forever. Not only is it a good warm up, it maintains your strength, but it sets your armature in a good balance. I will post new lessons approximately every two to three weeks, and I look forward to sharing the knowledge I accumulated with Carmen Caruso through those years with you in future lessons. Thank you for watching. My name is Ralph Devella, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It does not cost anything to do so, but it will notify you when a new video comes out. Thank you very much for watching. Hello, I'm Ralph Devello here. I would like to demonstrate for you the results of playing the Carmine Caruso system by playing on the trumpet the lowest musical note, the low F sharp, all the way up to the double high C, back down to the low F sharp, all in one breath, all in one setting. The all in one setting is the key, so you don't have to move the trumpet or the embouchure to play in the different ranges of the trumpet. Ah. Uh -huh. 